Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Urvi. If you're new here, I would like it if you would take a moment to subscribe to my channel as it would encourage me to make more such helpful videos for you. I post new videos every Tuesday and Friday and you can also find me on Instagram. We use photographs when we want to impress the audience or when we want to prove something. With photographs, bigger almost always means better and we illustrate headers with photographs and not bullet points. So when you are searching for images online, please use words that are present in the header. For example, this is a slide about co-working spaces and the images are a direct representation of what we are trying to communicate. Here are a few things to keep in mind while using photographs. Number one, please do not use photo stock cliches. Just like those kind of pictures, these don't work as well. It is hard to believe that these employees are actually doing an activity for building team spirit. So I would suggest you to avoid them as they are also low in quality. To find high quality images, you can go to unsplash.com or you can select high resolution images online. Number two, with photos, bigger means better. So if you have any chance to go from this situation to this, please do so. Similarly, if you can go from this slide to this or even this, please do so. We are trying to influence people on an emotional level. And I know this picture has nothing to do with the 71.4 million metric tons, but in presentation, we are trying to communicate and it works. Here is another example. And if you can go from this to this situation, please do so. Some people put two to three or even four images in one slide. Please do not do so because pictures deserve to be big as they have a lot of details. In this slide, there is information regarding very important financial decisions. So don't just keep it to one slide, make it two. Put pictures on the left and the top of the slide and not to the right of the slide. I think this is a much better composition. If you want the picture to be in the foreground and not the background, then move the header to the lower part of the slide. Yes, there are readability problems here because there is not enough contrast. One quick way of fixing it is by adding a semi-transparent colored box behind the text. And if you want the picture to be in the background and not the foreground, you can move the text to the center and create a bright box or a circle. And maybe dim the background by desaturating it or turning it into a black and white picture. Another trick is to create a semi-transparent box which is 100% transparent on the top and 50% transparent in the bottom and overlay your background photograph with this box. This will create a very nice contrast with black and white text. But my overall advice would be avoid photographs that have a central composition and instead use photos that follow the rule of thirds. Rule of thirds is a photography principle where you imagine breaking an image down to thirds both horizontally and vertically so that you have nine parts with four intersection points. When you position the most important elements of your image at these intersection points, you produce a much more natural image. And when you use the rule of thirds, you have plenty of space on one part of the image and you can add all of your text there. In this example, you can add the text on the blue patch of the sky and you can make some changes to it like this. Number four, please be careful with isolated people. Now, what I mean by this is sometimes people use images which have a white or transparent background with only some part of a person's body and place it in the middle of the slide. You can start to fix the situation by following the rule of thirds. You don't have to be over precise about it. Taking this example, we can first apply the rule of thirds and I have flipped the image to the left and put it directly above the box on the bottom 
and we can further improve it by reducing the size of the box. Using screenshots Sometimes we have to use screenshots to explain certain points. We can add a border to the screenshot and even a shadow so that it looks less confusing and does not merge with our background. Another important thing is to make the screenshot bigger and highlighting only what is important from it. We can use arrows or a circle to highlight the main point. Another trick is to make a magnifying glass effect like this. All you need to do is duplicate the picture, then double click it and you will find the picture format toolbar. Then you need to go on the crop option and below the triangle, click on the crop to shape. Here I will be using an oval shape. For Keynote users, you need to go to the Format option and click on Image. Then go to Mask with Shape option and then select Oval. And this would create a circular cutout which you can then magnify and add a shadow to it then put it above the screenshot and dim the screenshot itself to make it stand out. So to conclude, pictures create more retention and impact and they are also more persuasive compared to text. With vector art and with pictures, bigger means better and if you get a chance to go full screen, then do so. Please put the pictures on the left or on the top of the slide because they are eye-catching. And that concludes our topic of abstract, detailed and in-between illustrations. If you like this video, don't forget to share it and press the bell icon so that you don't miss any related videos from this series.